in the book, you mentioned that the kindness shown to you from minorities, people of color, was really like another part of like the the persistent kind of re-educating that it required to get yeah, you, you to flip the switch. You mentioned the black lady at breakfast, right? And that was such a such a powerful. Can you maybe we'll start on that? Yeah. So at McDonald's. Yes. Yeah. It's a great story, and it, it definitely, uh, to me, it's an example of the power of kindness. So early on in my white power days, because I'm a gifted genius, I thought it'd be clever to get a swastika tattooed on the middle finger of my right hand, which has since been covered up. Uh, by the way, Nick, do you know who Love. covered that up? Was it Chris? Chris Buckley. Oh, <laughs> gotta love it. God, what, what I, I want I do want to touch on him eventually. We but, will yeah. for sure. We yeah. will for sure. Um, so I had this swastika on my middle finger, and just to paint the picture, like I am this like stinking drunk, lanky, tattooed and scarred, shaved head neo-Nazi skinhead. I got swastikas tattooed on me. I typically had scars everywhere, stitches in my head, like big swastikas on my jacket there was no no one would have been like oh maybe he's a racist like i'm clearly a racist it was very very plain and there was a mcdonald's i went into and i at this point i i was uh i existed on ramen noodles and not like good you know artesian ramen like they got at silver lake ramen it, it these were like the bricks the 10 for a dollar ramen and uh, it was just something that filled my stomach. And that's what I ate all week long to so I'd have more drinking money. But one day a week on payday, I would go to McDonald's and I'd get a Big Mac. And that was like the only thing I ate all week that wasn't ramen noodles. And it was, I all week long, I'm looking forward to that Big Mac. And I, it never occurred to my gifted genius self that maybe if I didn't drink so much, I could have ate Big Macs more often. I don't know which would have been worse for me. But in any case, I go into this McDonald's to get my Big Mac, and behind the counter is this elderly black woman working there, taking orders. And I froze in the doorway because she had this beautiful smile on her face that was so genuine and so like unconditional for everybody. I, I liken it to the sun in the sense that the sun shines on everyone. Doesn't care what color your skin is, how much money you got, don't got, who you love, who you don't love, who you vote for, like the sun just shines. And that's how her smile was. And it made me really, really uncomfortable because I'm trying to hate black people. And here's this sweet, genuine old lady like making that seem as stupid as it is. So I go get my food, I scurry out of there. Next week, payday, I come back to the same McDonald's. It was right next to the place where I cashed my check. And she's there again. And this time she recognizes me and she remembered what I ordered. She's asking me about my day. And I'm all the more uncomfortable now. This is like fucking with my whole program. So again, I get my food and I scurry out of there. The next week goes by and in, in between these visits is when I got the swastika tattoo. So the third time I go back to this McDonald's, the third payday, now I have the swastika tattoo and I specifically got it to enrage people. Like I wanted to hurt people at the sight of it. And then if they wanted to do something about it, I'd close my fist and I'd physically hurt them. Like that was why I got that tattoo. And I certainly was not thinking of the sweet, gentle old black lady who worked at McDonald's when I got the tattoo. But when I walked, tried to walk into that door, I literally froze in the doorway again. And I just had this almost like instinctive thought. I'm just like, I don't want her to see this. And I, I put my hand in my back pocket and I'm just like, what, doesn't anybody else work here? <laughs> like I'm waiting for seeing somebody else comes up there. Nobody does. I'm thinking like, where's the next closest McDonald's? It's December, it's freezing and I'm hungry. And I'm like, okay, I'm just going to keep my hand in my pocket and she won't see it. So I go up there and I didn't occur to me that it's pretty difficult to reach in your pocket to get a, a bill with, without showing the back of your hand. And despite my best efforts, she sees the tattoo and she just says, like my grandma used to say to me when I, she'd catch me beating on my little brother. She was just kind of like, what is that on your finger? And I couldn't look her in the eye. I just like looked down at my steel-toed skinhead boots and I'm just sitting there and I'm like, it's nothing. And she waited until I looked up again. And when I did look up, our eyes met and she just said, I know that's not who you are. You're a better person than that. And I was just like, can I have my Big Mac, please? And I got my food and I scurried out of there. 
And I, I would love to say that I went skipping out of McDonald's going, racism stupid, she's so nice. Like, glad that's done. But I actually, I went home. I got as drunk as I could, as fast as I could. I went out in the streets and I attacked the first person I could find because I wanted to put as much space between me and this like singularity of humanity that I experienced as I possibly could. But the, the thing about human experiences, and this is why people like my friend Pardeep can make a living in mental health, is that we can't subtract things from our experience. Once something happens to us, it's there. And we can't just remove it. We can't pretend it never happened. All we can do is process it and deal with it. And I, it was all I could do to not process that act of kindness, to not deal with it. And for seven years, this happened like within my first couple months of being a skinhead, for seven years, that experience was part of me. And I, despite my best efforts to rip out that seed that she had planted, it took root and it grew alongside other seeds of kindness that I was so fortunate to experience. And it left less and less room in my heart for the kind of hate that it takes to hate people. And so it took seven years to get to the point where I'm like, I can't do this anymore. I got to change. And that woman's kindness was an integral part of the exhaustion that led me to that point. Hey everyone, thanks for checking out that clip. If you enjoyed it, be sure to hit the like button down below. And if you're interested in hearing the full episode, it's out right now on our YouTube channel. We've had a lot of great guests come on this show before, and we've got a lot of great guests coming up in the future. So hit subscribe so that you don't miss a single episode. And one final note, we're always looking for new ideas and new companies to feature on the show. So if you know of someone or know of a company, write us a comment down below letting us know who they are and what they do. We'd be happy to have them on the show. Till then, I'll just be here waiting for your comments. So, uh, see you later.